It didn't start with you. How inherited family trauma shapes who we are and how to end the cycle. Mark Wollen. Chapter 2. Video 3. Continued. The most common epi epigenetic tag is DNA methylation, a process that blocks proteins from attaching to a gene, suppressing its expression. DNA methylation can positively or adversely affect our health by locking helpful or unhelpful genes in the off position. When a stressor or trauma occurs, researchers have observed irregularities in DNA methylation that can be transmitted, along with predisposition for physical or emotional health challenges to subsequent generations. Another epigenetic mechanism that plays its a significant role in gene regulation is a small non-coding RNA molecule, molecule called microRNA. As with DNA, methylation stress inducing irregularities in microRNA levels can affect low genes or expressed in multiple generations. Along with the numerous genes affected by stress are the CRF1. The CRF2 genes. Increased levels of these genes have been observed in people who have depression and anxiety. The CRF1 and the CRF2 genes can be inherited from stressed mothers who share similar increased amounts. Scientists have documented numerous other genes that can also be affected by trauma experienced early in one's life. Our research demonstrates that genes retain some memory of their past expressions says Dr. Jamie Hackett from the University of Cambridge. The historic study conducted by Yolanda in 2008 brought considerable awareness to the idea that stress, pa stress patterns do, in fact, transfer from pregnant women to their children. Pregnant women in their second or third trimester, who were either at or near the World Trade Center during the 9-11 attacks in New York City and who went to, to develop PTSD, delivered children who had low levels of cortisol. Their children also exhibited increased distress in response to new stimuli. When cortisol levels are compromised, so is our ability to regulate emotions and manage stress. These babies were also similar for these babies were also smaller for their gestational age. Yuanda and her team suggested that the results of 9/11 studies are most likely due to epigenetic mechanisms. They found 16 genes that express differently in those who developed PTSD after 9-11 compared with those who did not. In an August 2015 study published by the Biological Psychiatric, Yuanda and her team at the New York Mount Senya Hospital demonstrated that genes change Gene changes could be transmitted from parents to children, analyzing a particular region of the FKBP5 gene, which is expressed with the stress regulation. Yolanda and her team found that Jews who had experienced trauma during the Holocaust and their children shared a similar genetic pattern. Specifically, they found epigenetic tags on every same part of the gene in both parent and child. They compared the results with Jewish families who were living outside of Europe during the war and determined that the gene changes in the children could be attributed only to the trauma that the parents experienced. There are now a significant number of studies demonstrating how the, trauma how the traumatic experiences of parents can influence the gene expression and the stress patterns of their children. In an article entitled Epigenetic Mechanisms of Depression, published by JAMA Psychiatric in February 2014, Dr. Eric Nestler writes, Indeed, stressful life events have been shown to alter stress in subse subsequent generations. Pregnant mothers who developed PTSD after 9-11 gave birth to children who not only had compromised cortisone levels, but also were very easily disrupted by loud noises and unfamiliar people. One study in England found that children's emotional and behavioral problems doubled when their mothers were more anxious during pregnancy. Trauma has the power to reach out from the past and claim new victims. 
right? Ad- writes addiction psychiatrist Dr. Dave Sack in Psychology Today. Children of a parent struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder can sometimes develop their PTSD, called secondary PTSD. He reports that about 30% of kids with a parent who served in Iraq or Afghanistan and developed PTSD struggle with similar symptoms. The parent's trauma, he says, becomes the child's own, and the child's behavioral and emotional issues can mirror those of the parent. Children with a parent who was traumatized during the Cambodian genocide, for example, tend to suffer from depression and anxiety. Similar children of Australian Vietnam Vietnam War veterans have higher rates of suicide than the general population. Native American youths on reservations have the highest suicide rate in the Western Hemisphere. In some parts of the country, the rate is 10 to 19 times higher than that of other American youth. Albert Bender, a Cherokee historian and an attorney specializing in Native American law, suggests that the intergenerational trauma felt by all Native people, by particular, but particularly by the Indian youth, is the result of the historical policy of genocide and exemplifies by the endless massacres that forced removals and military campaigns that continued to the end of the 19th century. He believes that generational grief is fueling these suicides. All of these memories, he says, resonates in his mind of our young people in one from another. He reports that young people are hanging themselves at such a high rate that a week without a suicide is now considered a blessing in many reservations. Lemanuel Lee Bistol, a Navajo PhD research associate in genetics at Harvard University, corroborates Bender's claim that young people are re- relying, reliving the past in their symptoms. He believes that epigenetics research is finally beginning to provide substantial evidence that inter- intergenerational trauma is a real phenomenon. Native American youths, like the children of our war veterans, like the children of our Holocaust survivors, and like children of the World Trade Center attack survivors, are among the modern world's newest victims of transgenerational trauma. Alarmingly, the list keeps expanding. Violence, war, and oppression continue to sow the seeds of generational reliving as survivors unknowingly transmit what they have experienced to successive generations. Case in point, Many people born from 1994 in Rwanda to young to have witnessed the senseless killing of approximately 800,000 people experience the same symptoms of post-traumatic stress in those who witnessed and survived the brutality. The young Rwandans report feelings of intense anxiety and observe visions similar to the horrors that occur before they were born. It is a phenomenon that was expected. All that is not said is transmitted says psychiatrist. Even children whose families were unscathed by the violence are similarly affected by what the psychiatrist refers to as a excuse me In the, so, in the selective subconscious. Yuanda claims that children of PTSD stricken mothers are three times more likely to be diagnosed with PTSD than children in the controlled groups. She also finds that children of survivors with three or four times are three to four times more likely to struggle with depression and anxiety are engaged more in substance abuse than either parent than when either parent suffered from PTSD. Yuanda and her team has also been able to distinguish differences in the child's symptoms based on whether the mother or the father Past the PTSD. Parental PTSD, she discovered, increased the likelihood that a child will feel disassociated from his or her memories, whereas maternal PTSD increases the likelihood that a child will have difficulty calming down. Specifically, Yuanda reports that children of fathers who had PTSD are probably more prone to depression and chronic stress responses. 
The opposite seems to be true for children whose mothers had PTSD. Joanna points out that mothers who survived the Holocaust feared being separated from their children, and the Holocaust offspring often complained that their mothers were over-attached to them. Joanna believes that the stress-induced epigenetics modifications were inherited from our fathers occur before conception and are transmitted in our father's sperm. She also believes that these changes can occur in our mothers either before conception or during gestation. Yolanda also notes that a mother's age when a trauma occurs is significant for what transmits to the child. Children of the Holocaust survivors, for example, inherited variances in the enzymes that convert active cortisol to inactive cortisol based on whether their mothers were younger or were adults during the Holocaust. PTSD experienced by a grandparent can also affect succeeding generations. As we saw with Gretchen, we related trauma can continue to spiral, affecting the grandchildren of those who suffered the original trauma. Trauma is not only from war, but from any significant enough to disrupt the emotional equi- equilibrium in our family. A crime, a suicide, an early death, a sudden or unexpected loss can lead to our revealing trauma symptoms from the past. Sack writes, trauma travels through our society as well as generational.